can you hear us? Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Hi, Dave. Hello. Oh, well. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm not good. I'm fine. Are you stoned by any chance, Dave? No, no, ma'am. Oh, I'm, yes. I, I am working, ma'am. I guess points. let's 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 focus on recent events uh, to make things simpler. Okay, so hey, recent events. Uh, um, recent. So recent event, recent events. So chance was um, chance was friends with a person called Tibbs. Tibbs was well. I mean, th- th- this is where the problem lies because. Chance is being tormented by trolls online. You'll have heard of trolls. They happen online a lot. Um, the, to the point of absolute danger, like that they, 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 you know, they stole stuff from his house. They, mm. they constantly stalk him online. Mm-hmm. Hello. I'm really just going to call it to it. I'm just going to call it straight chance because there's no point in beating around the bush. And the thing is, if you're going to talk to a therapist, you need to do, you need to say these things. So chance got caught in a sting, poking and sending photos to a um what he what 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 everybody thought was a 15 year old. It happens. Um and unfortunately because of that that is sort of like. It was a random. She thought he looked different, so she thought it turned out it was an adult. There was no children harmed in the in, in this situation, but she but because of that, he's now um, going through the vitriol of the of the you know of like the trolls hatred. He is enemy public enemy number one. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. you know this this. Oh, like they literally stalk him. They go to his house. They they ring people. Like everything. And he had a friend called Tibbs recently, and Tibbs was his friend. And Tibbs released a video yesterday, and in this video, um, Chance is admitting to being a paedophile. Um, now, what I said to him on the phone before was that the problem is, and I'm just going to call it like I see it, the problem is, is that from a uh, outsider's point of view, is that he is, is that, um, is that, dis- is, well, the thing is, he, the thing is, we were on about it, and it, it is like an addiction to the hate. What will happen is, Chance has a very reactive, um, 
a very reactive disorder where where someone winds him up online, he reacts with a vitriol filled video, then someone will do something else to wind him up another vitriol filled video. I mean you can have a look at some of the videos online afterwards and that'll show you a bit what it's like about the anger. But unfortunately it drives chance to do thing to do see very serious things it drives them to say the n-word the you know uh, you know the n-word the r-word mm -hmm. mm -hmm. like wishing death upon people i mean it, it, like and like i said before uh, sally you know sally is sally is his mom's ed is his stepdad yeah. and they have done nothing in the way of helping him with with this Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, like I mean, mm. chance help me out there. Like you've been on your own this entire time, and like I said, because he, he compared it to war, he compared it to war because it is. It's like being terrorized like constantly. And I said, well, if you're talking about soldiers who have PTSD, the first thing you do is to go get help. Yes. So yes. here we are. So here we are, Absolutely. wanting to go get help. Chance, so, is there anything you want to like? Yeah, I, I, I would like to ask uh, Chance. How, how do you feel about uh, how she's put your position? How, how she's stated your position? Do I? How do you feel? So is there about anything the, you want to? Yeah. How do you feel about uh, how she's put your story? Uh, do you feel that's correct? Do you feel? Do you have anything to add? It's actually very, very spot on. Like, she's definitely, you know, correct in what she said. And, you know, to add on to some of this, just to add on to some of the stuff they've done, they've, like she said, they've come to our house, they've mm -hmm. stolen stuff mm -hmm. quite a few times. And at one point, right before Christmas, they actually ended up taking a brick. We don't know which, who it was, but. One of them actually ended up taking a brick and throwing it through uh, the car windshield of my mom's car, which mm. we had to replace them. Mm. And then even... Uh, several times had attempted not only to try to do harm to me, but they actually had somebody which thankfully the police did catch this person that I'm about to speak about. Mm -hmm. They actually had someone go up here to our house um, with a knife who was actually ordered mm -hmm. from one of these trolls to break into our house because mm -hmm. they were actually like, on killing me, myself, and basically my entire family it was going to be me, mom, and when I said that, thankfully we didn't know about this until like a couple of days after it had happened. The mm -hmm. police caught the person right outside our house and arrested him. But outside of that, the police have literally done nothing to help, which I do understand they can't mm -hmm. really do anything. And as these people are out of state, so I, mean, I do get that. But it's like, is that like on top of, you know, like she said, everything that went on, it's just like, so, it's so, just been a chance. None of this stuff so, happens in a vacuum. So how much would you say your actions have contributed to this? Would you would you say you're blameless? Would you say... I would say there's definitely wrongdoings on both sides for sure. Like definitely the way I reacted and the way that, you know, I took things mm -hmm. and what, like, I wasn't, a lot of them were... Not the best choice to say the least. Like looking back now, like I can honestly say that, you know, if I had just, you know, ignored them back then, maybe things wouldn't have gotten as bad. But it's like I was telling her, and when all this very first started, I didn't know what a troll was. I had no idea what they were about. I had heard the term thrown around. Mm hmm. massive community of trolls and once i got drugged into it and over time like she said of me being messed with and terrorized i kind of really started to learn what they were really about and like she said it almost became 
like an addiction to react because they would do so much to terrorize me and my family that I almost felt like I had no choice but to give them what they want, which was that reaction. And looking back and the now... the problem is, the thing is as well, now they have the added ammo of me and, me and um, Chance were talking about before. Now they have the added ammo of right. one thing that was poignant was that he said he felt he said he felt very lonely and very depressed and I think that I think I think that's true I do think he, I mean, because it will you make the lonely and depressed but the unfortunate side effect of that is that it did it does drive it does drive you to fight to to look for any to look for any 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 attention for any, like any any love and care that you think comes your way and unfortunately that means he's being caught up in these sting operations because unfortunately like i said to him before because i did not mince my words before mm -hmm. i have a 15 year old daughter i know you're i know dave you're going to be more sympathetic because that's your job mm -hmm. but i'm a but i'm a i'm a parent like that could have been my 15 year old on the other end of that thing mm -hmm. like nobody nobody knew mm -hmm. really so and then we've ended up that's where we end up with the that's where we end up with the with the uh, so, conversation mm -hmm. with the video from tibbs so you did say stings plural this has happened more than once yeah, Kate and then uh, this uh, person named Nashville Mafia on YouTube, who is honestly, you can actually look her up, she is actually one of the most hated people on the internet okay. because of a lot of the stuff that she has done that is not okay. Okay. Like, well, we're talking... Ch this, Chance, I, I, don't, but, I don't want to discuss other people at the moment um, because this is about, yeah, this is you, about you. So, so let's... We can discuss that yeah. another day, but... So if this has happened sure. multiple times, would you say there's something driving you to talk to children or, or, or at least teenagers? Or is this just a mistake? Um, it's, it's literally a mistake that I've been trying to get away from. And the trolls see that and they just keep it going because one of them actually admitted that I, when I was on a panel, uh, the other night, ironically, with the person that started all this in the very beginning, who is actually then leaving me alone, one of the people that does like to do all of this actually did openly admit that they like to see me suffer, and that's why they do all this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and when I said that, it's like, I didn't know what to say. I was just like, like, you mm -hmm. know, and I, I talked it up, like, you know, I've asked you guys to leave me alone mm -hmm. multiple times. You will not do so. I asked them several times, like, what is it that you want from me? Several times. So so this Before, this person you were talking to has been uh, has been trouble for you in the past? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it's like, I asked him straight up, why do you keep doing this to me? And just the way he said it was unnerving. He was like, because you're a piece of shit, I want to mm. see you suffer and, mm. like, you don't deserve anything, but, you know, what we're doing to you. And it's just like, when he said that, it was just like, yes. It's like, how do you respond to that? Yes. Well, it sounds like, like you have a complicated relationship with these people. Like, they they have a, a grudge against you and they want to to be involved with you and to I'm not sure what I'm not sure what they want to do and ultimately what they like to do is they like the way these ones work that I've dealt with at least I can't speak for all trolls because I know all of them like each troll like each group of trolls is different mm -hmm. these ones they want to make money off Mm. That's what it's always about for them because they see me, they see someone who's obviously looks very different from the norm, which mm -hmm. I do. I'm not, I don't mind that. Say, like, he has no idea what you look like, so I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, listen, <laughs> I'm not gonna know. 
But like these people see me, they see that I'm different. Mm -hmm. And then some of you know, before all this came about, I was doing good. And they saw that I was, you know, like I said, I was doing well for myself. I wasn't bothering nobody. And then you know, once they saw that I had something that they wanted, which was me raging out, mm -hmm. because like I said, at first, when I first got drugged into this, mm -hmm. I didn't know how to hit. Like, I had no idea because I had never been presented or even taught how to deal with these kinds of people because back then, when I first started on the internet, I never knew that trolls were even a thing, never heard of them, never even knew they existed. I had no idea. And then when they came in, it was like, okay, I don't know how to deal with this. And they just kept going over and over. And like she said, they kept pushing me to the point to where it ultimately, the reaction thing, not only was that making money for them, which is what they want, mm -hmm. but it also got to point to where I kind of felt like in order to protect my family, I basically had to give them what they wanted, which was me raging up. And I didn't want yeah, what was it? What what um what what I was on about with Chance before was that the thing is, the thing is we're at the point now we've got two two um two snipe videos, two you know years. I mean this goes back to like Dave, you have no fucking clue. Basically, I mean I had no clue about this before work before I like started working with Chance. Holy uh, shit. I have never seen anything like it. It is insane. Wow. And unfortunately, they're picking on chances. You know, this, you know how I'm autistic. Mm -hmm. Well, they're picking on chances, yeah. um, reactive, reactive, like reactive personality. Mm. And it's given, and it, it's like, it means that, it means that we've got like years of just back and forth. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. think, but the problem is because of all the things that Chance has now done, whether they be right or wrong, yeah. they're, they're looking, they want to see him suffer. All mm -hmm. they see is a sex offender who they want to see suffer. And unfortunately, I was on a chance before about whether it's, whether it's a, 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 an addiction to the hate or an addiction to the the to the negative attention, mm -hmm. like it it just I just can't. For, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and for me, honestly, just, it we really needed a safe is. space with someone who knew their shit. <laughs> I don't. Right, you know, mm -hmm. and, and she's definitely right. For me, over time. It definitely did become an addiction, mainly to the hatred, but also to what was going on in general, because I kind of felt like, you know, mm -hmm. if I don't have anything else at this point to lose, you mm -hmm. know, why, you know, do this for them? Like, that was my thought process back then was, one, I'm trying to protect my family from being... But an even more danger than they had already been put in. Because mm -hmm. I never, I don't want my, I didn't want to see my family go through that stuff. No one does. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it was like, there was that side of me that was like, okay, you guys want a bad guy? Well, here you go. And that's not me. Like, like I was telling her over the last few days of just looking back over everything since everything went down, it was like, why did I fall for any of this? Like, like what made me want to well, go down that road and do this? Would you say like, you're addicted know, to the hatred? To an extent, yes. And, like, I don't want to be addicted to it because, like, nobody wants to have hatred. Of course not. But it was, like, it, was, it wasn't so much the hatred as it was me, I ultimately became addicted to wanting to get, basically wanting to get revenge for what they did to me, ultimately. Mm -hmm. Because of all the bad stuff they did to me. And, you know, to mm -hmm. an extent, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But wanting to, you know, to see, you know, the people that did you wrong, you want to see... that hatred like she said mm -hmm. it 
ultimately, like, it started out not as an addiction, but wanting to do what was right. Mm-hmm. And then over time, that wanting to do what was right just kept on going more and more and more and more. And then ultimately, it ended up becoming an addiction. And you didn't even realize it until it was too late. Okay. And would you say that's why you can't, you cannot disconnect from the internet? Unfortunately, that definitely is part of it, for sure. Mm-hmm. Like, just, mm-hmm. like, I try to avoid it, but it's like, it's hard to avoid when it's getting thrown in your face so much over and over and over. Like, mm-hmm. I can go online right now to pull up a music video or, you know, pull up, because there are people that have made videos standing up for me. Mm-hmm. There are people that have made videos defending me. Mm-hmm. But what's so up, and I'm sure she's even seeing a lot of this too, when these people make these videos standing up for me saying, hey, this stuff ain't right, I know it's messed stuff, but y'all need to leave him alone and let him do what he needs to do to get better. These people then become targets and get attacked themselves. Mm-hmm. And it's like, what the heck? Like, it's, it's beyond messed up, you know? And like I was, it's like I was, me and her had like, what was it, like a two, three hour conversation? Yeah, three hours. <laughs> and it was, it was something along the lines of like between two, three, I, I want to say pushing almost four, but I'm not sure. But it was like, you know, we went over just so much stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, like, it was insane. Like, you know, like I told her and talking to her this morning, like I did. You know, I kind of realized quite a bit. Like, I did realize that, you know, in order to starve these people out, clearly I need that. Clearly not responding is the first thing. But it was like when when Tibbs did what he did, because Tibbs actually was a good friend to me, and he did actually get me away from them. Explain Tibbs a bit more because Tibbs is sort of the pinnacle point where we were at the point. Like we said, you know, the rock bottom. Yeah, like when he came to Tibbs, basically, first off, the way that Tibbs signed into this was he saw what I was going through. He reached out to to me through somebody who they used to be a friend. Like, we're not necessarily friends, but we don't necessarily hate each other. We just don't talk like that. Mm-hmm. But, like, um, he reached out to me. We ended up talking. He saw what I was going through. And he helped me to get away from the troll community over. Which he did a very good job of doing. Like, he did get me away from that. Mm-hmm. But then, in doing so, and I don't know what made me do this, but when he mentioned that he has, um, I think he said something like 72 different altars, which, like, once he said that, Mm -hmm. on top of having a love doll, which I have seen, you know, firsthand, because I would FaceTime with him on Facebook and stuff. So I have seen I mean, this is something I'm going to jump of, i'm gonna jump in here for a second i did say to him as well like this is where this is how desperate chance has gotten like this is how deep it goes mm-hmm. when I, it wasn't until i pointed out before i was like chance what the fuck are you doing with anybody who has a childlike mm-hmm. sex doll who believes it's real mm-hmm. and, they said, and he turned around and said to us like you know what? I never really thought about it. And I'm like, dude, like, this is the sort of shit that that Chance is getting into because he's not getting help. We're Mm -hmm. just going round in circles all Mm -hmm. the time. So I really do think because this is, I mean, bless him, he took three hours of me, like, you know, hard questions, owning uh, owning it. I think the best thing about it is you admitted and owned owned your shit. You went, look, I've done some fucked up shit. 
I am like, it's like um, I read right. in his, um, I, just to let you know a bit of history, because every because therapists have no medical history. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Lance's biological sperm donor, we'll call him sperm donor, because that's all the fuck he is. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have nothing to do with that, guy, thank God. Oh. Yeah, he, he was um, in his old medical records, which someone found online, strangely enough, it came up with, um, it came up with that, that he had, um, he has a severe avoidance disorder. He um, refused to engage with any meaningful therapy, refused to get, and I think the thing for chances, and I didn't say this before, is that this is giving him the opportunity to get away from that, to get away from being his sperm donor and going, you know what, fuck biology, I'm going to own up to my problems, own up mm-hmm. and say, you know what, I was desperate, I was lonely, that, you know, the, this is what's attracting me, people who I shouldn't be attracted to, it's, and then, it, and then, it, and then moving, and then being able to move forward from that, so mm-hmm. I am so fucking proud of him for this, he's done mm-hmm. so fucking well, like, honestly, mm-hmm. I mean, it's a long time coming, but he did fucking well, mate. Oh, 100%, <laughs> what the hell I would, oh, let's see, it all started rough. Like early to mid twenty seventeen, and one side definitely has been a very long time. Mm. And like it, it's just one of those things where it was like the way that the way that all of this initially started was my ex Candle, who I actually met through ironically one of my now exes, ironically. Um, he was psychotic. And I'm not talking like, oh, I'm gonna murder you, kind of psychotic. No, like, mm-hmm. and I know you're gonna laugh. I know you both are gonna laugh when you say this. You're probably gonna be like, why the hell did you get with her? So, what do you mean? I wish I had the answer to that. I wish I never did looking back. But she um, asked me. It's in the morning. Oh, hey, cool. I can do that. I ended up doing it, and then she started going with the wall about how she believed fully, and I do mean she fully believed this, that she was a werewolf to the point to where she would take pictures of her dog's paw and send it to me, and then claim that, like, oh, you know, like, this is what the Nets will do to me, and blah, 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 and I flat out told her right there and there, like, I can't do this, this is too much for me. So I ended up blocking her on Facebook and, you know, when I step away from her, as I should, and, like, I honestly thought that maybe she was just going to let it go, and, you know, like, you know, we were going to go our separate ways. Well, I found out that through a mutual friend of ours that I was still friends with at that time, then he would proceed to go onto Facebook and onto to YouTube and stuff like that. And starting and literally started making videos about how I was this, I was that, how I'm a pedophile, I'm this, I'm that, how I supposedly raped her and like when she said those things, I'm like I'm sitting there in my head thinking one, I never even met you outside of Facebook, so how can I even begin to do any of that? And second off, what makes you say I'm a fucking pedophile? Like, you know me, you know what the hell I'm about. Well, it was through those videos that the main troll that started everything, um, Music Biz Marty, who, like I said, was actually on panel with last night because he actually has been. He's surprisingly been doing different stuff outside of messing with people, which for me was kind of a shock, but um, he saw that, and that's when he started stepping in to mess with me very lightly, and this and that and the other, mm-hmm. and then he, like, he decided, oh, because I'm doing this, to do what she did to me with the whole 
pretending to be underage and this and that and the other, blah, blah, blah. And I later on came out and they were like, hey, yeah, I screwed up. That shouldn't have happened. But I also asked the question, like, because I did look into her stuff after everything went down. And I found that she has a very nasty history. Mm-hmm. I mean, very nasty. And then the question which she loves, like, she, like, you thought I was bad for attention. She's literally the definition of an attention whore. Chance, like, can, she can really I ask you a, a couple uh, uh, hard questions, I guess? Uh, number one. Yeah, what's up? Have you ever been diagnosed with any mental disorders? I'm just ADHD, and that was it. Okay, okay. It's a, it's a history question, John Staff to yeah, ask. I, is, Sorry. I, I, oh, all I'm just trying to get Anything he asks, it's like... Yeah, this is why I say it might be yeah. difficult. Just, just try to be as honest to the best as your recollection. Uh, number two. Yeah. Is there any history of familial sexual abuse in your family? In your family? No, just my dad going to jail for, I want to say it was statutory rape. Like, he went to jail the day I was born and then didn't get out of prison until I was like, what, 18, 19? And that was not against a family member? No, that was against something totally different. Okay. Okay. Any any brothers or sisters who who maybe acted inappropriately? No, not to my knowledge, anyway. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. We can continue with your story. Oh, no, you're totally good, dude. I understand entirely. Like, and honestly, I'm glad that she did this. That way, I can you know move forward and get out of this stuff entirely. Because, like I told her. Like, I'm not at that point to where it's like, I need to get away from this crowd and start doing better. Because, like I told her, if I want to be able to be that person that is able to help other people like myself who have gone through these messed up situations and don't have, you know, that place that they can, you know, come and hang out and, you know, and not be judged and, you know, want better for themselves. Like, if, if I'm not able to... You know, yeah, I'm trying to own stuff under control. How am I supposed to help anybody else, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, like, especially with the line of work that I'm in, with me doing music, I know there's a lot of people that, you know, that depend on me, that want to see me do good, and it's like, if I can't help me in some time, how am I supposed to even remotely be able to help them? Which is why I'm glad that she did this, so like, I'm going to tell you, dude, she opened up my eyes quite a bit this morning. You know, like, I, like, as a matter of fact, after the call, I was literally just sitting there just, like, thinking, like, like, just really looking at, like, how she brought up Tim. Like, it really meant, like, when she was telling it to me, and when I kind of realized that, like, it made my, it, it made my skin crawl. It was just like, mm-hmm. how can I have trusted someone? Mm-hmm. Like, this is a dude that literally believes that his sex doll is alive and that he feels like these so called entities that are in his head are real. And last night, me, well, not last night, the night before, him, but me and Marty and another uh, mutual YouTuber who I have who I'm actually okay with by the name of Gigi Allen, we all sat up on the panel and we tried to tell Tim, so like, dude, you need help. Mm-hmm. Like, I know that I need help to get away from this stuff. And look, I've openly admitted this several times, you know, you know, you know, you know and all stuff. I know I'm that stuff. I know that I need help to be able to do better. So that way I don't end up making these mistakes again in the future. Like, I get it. But it's like with Tibbs, it's like he and what man, his family life has not been the best. Because he lives in and out of motels. Like mm-hmm. and I feel bad for him and it does suck. But it's like he he just he has so much wrong with him. Like he talked about 
all these different entities and this and that and the other. And the one thing that I should have put two and two together, and he never really put two and two together with the whole sex doll thing until she brought it up. Once she brought it up, that's kind of when he realized, like, dude, this guy is seriously creepy. Mm-hmm. Like, I know I've done some messed up stuff, but the stuff that I've done, I can easily, you know, work at doing better on it. I can work on, you know, showing the that I'm not like that. But this dude, it's like, I don't know how her explain him. She's better at explaining him than even me. I've been around the guy. Oh, well, yeah, so Tibbs is, t- Tibbs has, um, was, he's clearly gone through a history of, um, childhood abuse. Sounds like it. Fantasies of, um, a, well, he, he, I mean, he has a proclivity towards children. Um, unfortunately, it's a case of the abused is becoming now the abuser. Mm. Um, know, and it's, it's, it's unlike, tra- it's, it's like, and he, you know, and he, like, and this is the thing, this is what I said to Chance, because Chance is going on, Chance had, has a, um, platform online but the problem is is that he's just trapped now by this pedophile label and by this thing because we are because we're coming up against you know and chance with all the best will in the world and or you might be an oscar like i said before you might be an oscar winning actor but Tibbs came out with a video where Chance cries and um and 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 admits to being a pedophile but Tibbs was record, recording that, and people were giving Tibbs a pass because they, because he sold Chance down the river, which really confuses me. But then that's how. It, but yeah, he, he's just a, he's just a very strange individual. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't come out like he's very, highly autistic, highly autistic. Mm-hmm. Oh, very much. He's openly admitted to being autistic, and the thing that definitely. You know, the, the thing that definitely set me off with him, like, out of all this, is one, you know, he lied to me and said that he wasn't recording it, which, that's the first off, like, that, that right there got me completely ticked off. It's like, dude, you sit here and say that you're not recording this or on a live stream, and then you later on find out that you are. First off, that's messed up for you to do that. And then basically what happened was, um, my normal former dad, and the reason I say former dad is because my adopted dad, he basically disowned me mm-hmm. in front of thousands of people. And that's what's not going to lie. Mm. Anyone hurt a lot. Really did. Like, that hurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but basically stating that if I didn't want to stop talking about them, that they were going to sue me and my mom for slander and defamation of character, which I don't get why they would do that, because all I've been doing was speaking about my experiences with them. Mm-hmm. And Nancy, you're avo- the chance, no, you're avoiding things again. This is what I've been on about. What, you what have to be not, completely honest, I, honest. You made a video where you called him, he called him, this is what I mean, he's very very reactive, he doesn't, he doesn't have the, the, there seems to be a disconnect between, like, action and reaction, instead of taking 10 seconds, he doesn't, like, quite realise what he's doing, and in that minute, he's made, and in that immediate moment, in the anger, in whatever, he's coming out with these things, and unfortunately, they're so full of it. I mean, I told Chance. I mean, mm-hmm. as much as my professional wow. and personal care go, personal care goes, I said to Chance, if you watch, if I was a person randomly on the internet zooming through videos and came across it, it sounds horrific. He called it like there's a video, and he called and he called him a pedophile. That is oh, why he now has a lawsuit for slander, mm, oh which isn't the best. But I, I think oh, like. Oh, 
There's not a lawsuit yet, but they did send, like I said, they sent out a courtesy letter saying, hey, either stop or we're coming after you. And it's like I told her, because of the fact that they disowned me mm -hmm. and wanting them to do me, which is fine. That's why I told them, they don't have no problem keeping me sure about them, especially after what they did by disowning me. It's like, okay, you guys want to show them out? Okay, that's cool. I have no problem with that. But what happened was Tibbs initially, he basically backed me into a corner. He basically was like, hey, either, like, he didn't say this directly, but you can turn it to you. He basically said straight up, either I'm going to admit to being this, that, and the other, or he was going to help them file the lawsuit against me mm -hmm. and do everything he could to to have me locked up and thrown away, and that's when I was like, I kind of felt like I had no choice at the time. Like, when you're given that option, to either admitting to something and, you know, to basically avoid possible either jail to me or going through a bunch of unnecessary court crap, I would have, like, in that moment, I was like, I would rather take this option Instead of having to go through court and pay legal fees and do this and do that and do the other, like, no one wants to go through that. Like, mm -hmm. so I literally felt like I had no choice but to go through that. And the thing that gets me is, you know, he, this is the thing that I actually kind of thought about too, and I think she might have a good uh, play on this, or she can, she'll probably piggyback off of this. Looking back, not only this morning, after she brought everything to light about how he could actually very well be, mm -hmm. but just looking at him from that sense of anything, I honestly feel like he waited until I was at my lowest point where I was in here. I had already gone through a lot of that very day. I was already worried enough for, you know, my family because of my dad and his wife sending out that courtesy letter. On top of like me not understanding, well, you know, my dad could just tell me, I was just trying to figure out everything out, like why, like, I didn't understand like, how, you know, a dad could disown their son in front of thousands of people and have his wife, who nobody in our family can stand, do the stuff that she's doing and not only garner our attention, but to sit there and threaten me and my family with a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. I was already in the point, and this was, because I didn't understand it. Like, I didn't understand how somebody could do stuff like that. And if I genuinely feel like he waited until that moment, and then went on the panel and was like, hey, either you're going to admit to this, or this is what's gonna happen, you know, it's just like, at that point, I was confused, I'm like, why would you do that after you just spent two or three weeks, you know, with me, seeing how I am when you are not around these people, saying that I'm normal, more or less, that I don't like to get raged out. I don't like to be angry. And you help me get away from these trolls all to what? Throw me back to them? Why? Mm -hmm. Like, it, it doesn't make sense. It's like, that would be like, just prime example. Let's say that you guys help me get away. That wouldn't make any sense. Uh, what just happened? I don't know. I think it was just Discord. Yeah, I, I, I uh, broke yeah. up for a second. Sorry about that. Alright, you're good. But it's like, it's, but like she said, this dude is so seriously, he's very, very strange. Like, have you ever, question, have you ever played the Fallout series, like the Fallout games? No, I have not. 
Well, okay, so you probably heard of him, though, at the Fallout games and stuff. Yes. Well, he believes he believes that those games are real. Mm. Mm. Like, he genuinely believes that they are real life. And that's why me and Marty and Gigi Allen all last night, because Marty even openly admitted on either, I mean, it was a text message to a friend of mine and stuff that he knows that I'm actually good friends with. Marty openly admitted to, you know, you know, messing up and what he did was wrong and that I'm not actually what these people claim to be. And that, yeah, I may have messed up you know, and done some screw up stuff, but it's nothing that I can't get past. Mm-hmm. And that's what Marty's been. And they initially went out there to thank Marty, honestly. He went up there to thank him and be like, hey, you know, I appreciate you not messing with me and I appreciate you coming up and, you know, saying that and then this and then the other because you know what went down and you're you're showing that you actually want to not only better yourself, but you're showing that you want to see me do better, and I appreciate that. So me and Gigi Allen and Marta, we all decided, like, hey, we all see how Tibbs is. Why don't we do an intervention and see what we can get of this? Because part of me does care about Tibbs, because I see the person he can be. I know what it's like to deal with somebody who's autistic, because one of my cousins is on the very severe end of the spectrum to where they have to have a caretaker. Mm-hmm. So I I was raised around autistic people my whole life, like my cousin and people that I grew up with in school. So like part of me felt for it. I was like, dude, this guy has had so much bad stuff going for him. He doesn't really have any friends. He doesn't really have anybody. So let me see what I can do to to help him out. Like even though he did what he did to me, that 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 selfless part of me is like, yo, like let me help this dude out. Let me see if you know I can help him out because I've been in his shoes and I know what it's like to be there, and it sucks. It really does. Okay. So I was like, you know, let me do for him what he did for me and try to help him out. But unfortunately. Things went south really bad, and unfortunately, he, instead of him leaving in tears, he left me in tears, because, like, it really made me realize, like, yeah, a lot of what he said was messed up, but a lot of it, a lot of it hurt more than anything else, because, like, him sitting there saying that I'm the reason that this happened and that happened, it's like, dude, that wasn't on me. Um, I understand that you feel like I hurt you because, you know, this, that, and the other, but those were never my intentions. And he ended up just going on this long tangent of this, and that, and the other, and I flat out, and that's when, you know, I got so enraged by what he said to me because I was so hurt by what he did that I was just like, you know, how can I not respond to this? Like, even though I know in the back of my mind I shouldn't have responded, just there was that part of me that was like, that wanted to tell him the truth straight out and tell him, like, look, dude, you say that I'm this and that and the other, but what are you doing by hanging out with the very people that you got me away from? Like, what does that say about you, man? Like, when you sit there and you help me get away from these people and then turn around and join these people that have done all this messed up stuff. Like, what the heck? Like, I was more confused than anything, but it was like, what the heck, dude? And then, like I said this morning... You know, this this needed to happen, you know? It's like I was telling her earlier, like, I really feel like, you know, after what happened the other night, like, that definitely was, you know, for me at least, I really feel like, you know, that was, you know, my, that definitely was my rock bottom, like, 
for sure. And it's like, like she kind of made me realize, like, I can either do one of two things. I can sit here and stay stuck and continue to, you know, one, continue to feel sorry for myself and, you know, just continue on this messed up path. Or I can, or I can get my ass up and I can start doing mm -hmm. something about it. And it was like, I knew in the back of my mind, like, I needed to do something because, like, not gonna lie, like, seeing my family suffer the way that they have, not only because of, you know, how I responded to these people, but more or less because of what these people have done. It's like, mm -hmm. it kills me mm -hmm. seeing them go through that. Like, there have been times where, they, I have laid up here, and I, I can think, hear them. I, I think, I've just had, a, I've just had a strange thought. Do you What's think, up? Chance, do you think, Chance, in any way, do you think that, do you think that, because I know I said, I know we, we talked about before how the, yeah. how the incidents with the, um, with the, the incidents with the with, with the um, with the fifteen year old in bed commas, um, the, those stemmed from feelings of loneliness, desperation, things like that. But do you think that the reason that you've continued with the trolls is maybe it's because you 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 feel like punishing yourself for the things that you've done? I know I know people say that you know, but do you think in some Maybe so. It's maybe there's something in. Maybe there's something in it that you feel that you feel like because like because everybody because everybody says it that you that you feel like you you. I mean, you know, because you should have done it. That that's, there's no two ways about it. And I told you, if I was a mother, I would tell you to fuck off and go die. But as a professional. And think, yeah, you know, um, and no, there has no, I'm just saying to Dave now, there hasn't actually been any children hurt ever in this conversation okay. that, that that anybody knows, that anybody knows of. There has actually not been any children mm -hmm. hurt in this situation. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, but the problem is, is that we need to, we need to intervene before before Thank chance you. ends up yeah. in the cycle ends up more desperate and then the next person who says hi to him doesn't matter who it, it doesn't matter who it is he's gonna end up reciprocating mm -hmm. and that's where all the problems mm -hmm. lie mm -hmm. so right. chance I, i'd like i'd like to say to you chance um i would like you to think about what your goals for therapy would be what you'd like to accomplish not not a question of who else you want to help, but how do you want to help yourself? How do you want to take steps to lead a better life? Don't you don't have to tell me right now. I want you to think about this. And and my office hours are ending shortly, so I'm going to have to go soon. But I want you to think about this and we can maybe talk uh, in another day, maybe this week, maybe next week. But that's something you should consider yeah, is what would be your goals for therapy and how would you make yourself a better person and, and get away from the trolls and the internet and all these problems? Yeah, for sure. And I definitely do. I can honestly say I definitely do appreciate you guys stepping in and doing what you guys are doing because, like, honestly, there's not very many, considering how evil a lot of these people are and you know, I will admit how dangerous some of them can be. Like, a lot of people wouldn't even dare to even reach out to help like you guys have. And that's, that definitely is saying a lot. I have to ask again, sorry to interrupt, I'm just being a right sort here. Because the thing is, I know, I, I know far more than I should ever know about this situation. I should have stopped with episodes of Bluey. But um, um, Chance, Blind Billy, I've got to ask you, what happened? Blind Billy, as they call him. I I discovered this. Oh my! Uh, so long story short, me and we 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 were both underage. We were both still in high school, actually. Mm -hmm. Actually, I was in what my freshman year, 
Mm-hmm. I want to say he was the second year or like one year older. I'm not sure. I, I don't remember. It was like back in, it was back in like 2008. So I don't remember even what grade he was in. Mm-hmm. But like me and him, we were still, we were young. We were stupid. We were still, you know, trying to, you know, find ourselves and discovering who we were as you do when you're at that age. Because, you know, you're still, you know, trying to figure out who you are. Mm-hmm. And me and him had known each other for a long time around school and whatnot. And then me and him decided, like, we were like, we decided to end up, we ended up messing around. Because what happened was the lights and, well, the electricity at our house went out because there was, like, a really bad storm. And he lived, like, right down, like, literally, I could, I was able to walk to his house. It was, like, not even 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Like, he lived, like, right down the road and around the block. So I ended up uh, going over there because I had homework to do and stuff and whatnot. Well, you know, he ended up coming on to me. And at that time, I was young. I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to feel. We ended up messing around. We both went to school the next day. He ended up telling the principal what had happened. And then he ended up actually getting expelled. Not because I had done anything wrong, but because they wanted to prevent that from happening ever again. And these trolls, they keep on getting mixed up, saying like, oh, you did this, you did that. And I'm like... The thing is, Dude, though, Blind on. Billy, uh, sorry, Billy K, Billy K, I keep calling him Blind Billy, that's awful, that's awful, I shouldn't do that. But Billy, uh, Billy, K, Billy came on and, and said yeah. that, that, well, he, he said, now be honest, trans people can talk amongst us, you know, like, uh, just, yeah. I mean, like, the worst thing, you know, you've admitted the worst, I mean, the worst is, the worst is, by far over yeah. like you know we've 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 gone over things and you you've admitted that there's a problem there and and i just think you know in right, well, honesty I mean, do you think there was maybe more one-sided than others what, what, do you think that maybe's billy do you maybe think that maybe's billy I'm not saying he didn't want to, but do you think maybe right. he pressed it a bit too hard? Honestly, in the looking back now, in some ways, I feel like like that could have been a part of it. But at the same time, it was like 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 the whole question that I've had the whole time. Or I mean, yeah. I've tried to ask him this multiple times. Like, if you did not want this to happen, then one, why did you not say something back then? And two, why did you go to the, like, and this is what he did not say, that he actually did. He, when he went to tell the principal, I didn't know about it. So what he did was he ended up writing me a note after I found out that he had told the principal, which I don't know the note anymore because it's been years. But he ended up uh, writing me a note in class stating that he didn't mean to tell the principal. It's like, if you didn't mean to tell the principal, then why do it? You know, I think what can like, often happen, what can ha- often happen is that from. I'm sure, Dave, I'm sure Dave knows, but from a woman's perspective, how we usually end up into it is that there's not, there isn't as much informed consent as what there should be. And one right. side thinks it's okay, the other one's not giving proper signs, i.e. not turning around and going, no, fuck off, and running away. I mean, right. we can't, um, that, not, that doesn't happen one side i mean you, you never know he might have regretted telling the principal but then again he might have also just not wanted to upset you like right. he, uh, right. he obvious, i mean if he if, if he was will 
if he was willing to make it, there's obviously been something, whether you've missed it or not, maybe you have missed the signs. Maybe this is a chronic thing. Maybe this, I mean, the thing is, this could be symptomatic of a bigger, of the, of, of the bigger problem. I, I, I you know, you to, don't see the signs. I want to interrupt signs. you there because I would like to say to Chance, and this is another thing I, I don't want you to answer. I want you to consider uh, over the next, you know, several days or whatever, is that a lot of these, a lot of these situations uh, either stem from or have to do with sexual situations. And I'd like you to think about maybe why that is. What, what, what in your head makes those situations maybe appealing? Maybe uh, uh, what, what gravitates you towards that kind of situation? And maybe consider that as a way uh, uh, to progress on your path towards towards living a better, yeah, for better sure. life. Yeah, for sure. Okay. For sure. That was very well put. That was very well put. <laughs> and that was. And, I, and the thing that gets, and um, speaking on the, like, the whole blind bill, I think the reason why they call him blind bill is because he is actually partly blind. Mm-hmm. Like, he's not fully blind, like, he can see, like, the, uh, like, he's not, like, fully blind, but, like, he can see, like, the outside, like, the shape of the outsides of certain things. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's mm -hmm. where the whole thing okay. comes from. Okay. But it's, like, it's, like, what gets me, like, the whole thing that gets me, though, with all the troll stuff is, like... I never understood, like, why they would go after someone's friends and family. It's like, like, look, for a prime example, let's say that I had a new not that I do, because honestly, you're honestly one of the coolest people I've met so far. Like, you're actually really fucking cool. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you know, it's like, if you have a problem with me or I have a problem with you, why would I get, why would we get, each other's family and friends involved. Like, if I have a problem with you, it's with you. It's not with your friends or your family. Mm -hmm. And what they me is they basically have said, no, screw you. Like, basically what they have done is essentially they've been like, no, screw you. We have a problem with you. So we're not only going to go after you, we're going to go after your friends and family as well, which they have done mm -hmm. on multiple occasions. And it's just like, Dude, if you have, and I've told them this multiple times, like, dude, leave my friends and family out of it. If you have a problem with me, take it up with me. Don't be going after my friends and family, right? Well, we can work something. You know, sometimes right? therapy can not only help you explain your own actions, but it can help you understand other people's actions. So when you say, I don't understand something, a lot of times, you can find out the answer by working with a therapist, by understanding your motivations and other people's motivations and what led you to the position yeah. you're in. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, and I do understand to an extent, like, how things got as bad as they did as far as, like, me reacting and stuff like that. Like, she definitely, I swear to God, she needs to be a therapist. I swear to God. No, I, just, I, I just cosplay as one at the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. You're actually so good at that. Like, you actually need to be doing it. Because, like, the way you explained everything this morning, like, it made so much sense. And I kind of understood, like, you know, especially where the lines were drawn. Like, I get where, you know, I shouldn't have reacted at all from the very beginning. Like, I get that I should have, you know, ignored it and not have reacted. And eventually, you know, it would have stopped. But it was like I said, you know, back then, I didn't know how to handle it. I didn't know what a troll was. I didn't know how to deal with it. Because when you're put in such a chaotic environment like that, and the best way I can put it, I know it sounds kind of dark and creepy, but it's like... It's like handing a kid a freaking rifle and telling him to go after the bad guys without telling him who the bad guys are. Mm -hmm. The kid's not going to know what to do. Mm -hmm. He's not going to know Sorry, who the bad guys are. just a quick, just a quick one again. Um, yeah. You know how I said, you know how I said, I keep thinking of, I keep thinking of things as a, 
listening as I'm listening to you. This is the well, thing with that now I can step back and think of things that I didn't think of before. <laughs> you don't actually have a problem with back people, do you? No, no, not Once again, at all. one of the things that I don't... Well, Why do no. you keep saying that goddamn word? Really? I don't know. It's just... for me, honestly, for me, it was more or less for the factor of, like, not that, I, not that I'm racist or anything, it's one of my best friends is black. And this dude was raised by a white dude, but this dude's the blackest... He's literally the whitest black dude I know. Like, he's black as hell, but he was raised by a white family nicest dude in the world but when it came down to the controls it ultimately got to a point to where it's like that that younger naive dumb part of me that i'm working on getting rid of was like okay since you guys want to do this what can i do to hurt you guys the same way that you guys hurt me and that's basically where that stem from was like okay since you guys hurt me let me show you how it feels by doing this. And trust me, I know it was wrong. I get it was wrong. Like, looking back now, like, honestly, if I could go back and smack myself upside the head for that stuff, I would be. Like, I'm here, too. Like, I would definitely be, I'm definitely kicking myself in the ass right now. Like, looking back, like, why did I do that? Like, Looking back, there is so much stuff that I just, like, like, when I look back at these videos of myself, it's just, like, I don't even recognize who that person was. Like, looking at those videos, you know, like she said earlier, like, you, like, you take how I'm talking to you guys, you know, and then you look at those videos, and you're like, it's like, it makes you wonder, like, what kind of mindset was I in when I did that? Mm -hmm. Like, why would... David. Yeah, Hello? I think you are. Hello? Oh, hey. are you back? Oh, sorry no, about he's that. back. Sorry he's about back. that. Where did, where did you hear up to? Uh, just just uh, about 30 seconds ago. almost like a virus like mm -hmm. it's like once you, once you get hooked it's very hard to get away from it mm -hmm. and that's something that i noticed with myself is like once i got drugged into this community which i still don't understand how i got drugged into it mm -hmm. or why they chose me mm -hmm. out of millions of other people that they could have actually gone after that deserved it it's like why drag me into this community and put me through all this and mm -hmm. this and the other? Mm -hmm. but this was like, before where we're talking about the, this is before the incidents with Kate and everything, Dave. We're, do, we're talking from the very, very beginning now, then. Right. Because, like, because was it Mart? Was Marty messing with you before Kate? And then. Oh, Kate yeah. Came. Wait, wait. Yeah. yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. yeah. What happened was, Martin started messing with me, and then he decided to drag, I don't know if like, he hired her, like paid her money, or if she did it willingly, but he pulled her in and got her to do what she did to me. And this is what gets me when I confronted her, and this still does not make sense to me at all. Like, maybe you guys can make sense of this, but I. I, for the life of me, couldn't. When I confronted her about why, about why she did what she did to me, her exact, which you can pretty much tell us is an excuse. She basically, when I asked her, like, hey, why did you do this to me? Her exact excuse was, oh, because you give off pedophile vibes. That's not an excuse. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. unfortunately, we, here we are. Right, but it's like, it's one of those scenes where it's like, over time, you know, like she said, once it got to the point that it got to recently, like, once they kind of reach that point, like, leading up, I'd say, like, the last two to three months that mm -hmm. led up to that, in a way, I kind of felt like 
you know, I was punishing myself for, you know, everything that happened. But at the same time, it was like, why do I keep doing this to myself? Like, why do I keep punishing myself instead of just, like, moving forward and trying to do better? I'm sitting here doing this. Like, Mm -hmm. it really took, like, her messaging me and, you know, talking for, like, those three to four hours this morning, like, it really made me, like, realize, like, maybe me punching myself was probably the wrong move. Like, I can understand, you know, me kicking myself in the ass for, like, the first, you know, few months or so, I get it. But it's like, here lately, it's been like, why do I continue to do this to myself? Like, I should be moving forward and trying to better myself, not being stuck and punishing. No matter how depressed, lonely, or lonely, or suffering you are, life is shit and then you die, and we do... We do not talk to people online, do we? But that was what we that was what we said mm-hmm. the last time. Just tro- going forward, yeah. just don't, yeah. just don't. It's just not. Yeah. Worth, it's yeah. just not worth it. Because I was like, I was saying about um, my brother. You know my brother, and uh, and he's been single, God, for nearly mm, long time now. And know. you know, because unless you know. It's, you know, it sucks, but, uh, you know, I was alone seven years, and I'm like, it was a long time, and I had kids, so, yeah. you know, and it, yeah, it's yeah. just a fact of life, you have a house, you are safe, you have yeah. adequate money, housing, and food, and heat, um, <laughs> and heat, because yeah, I have been yeah. in a house that's not here before, so yeah. there's no... The, this is why I said therapy and going to the doctor because I do believe that if we felt better and wasn't as depressed and didn't continue the cycle, that it would mean that he wouldn't end up in situations mm-hmm. where he, you know, he wouldn't end up right. in situations um, where he would be talking to a child. Right, and it's, it's one of those things where, like, I like if you look at, you know, all the videos where, like, I did say that I was, you know, leaving and wanting to do better for myself, those were actually legitimate attempts at trying to get away from it, but I never really realized. Everything went down. It's like, it's literally one of those things where I was like, it got, I will admit, it got to a point to where these people made my house feel like a jail cell. Mm-hmm. Like, cause, like, and when I say feel like a jail cell, like, I'd say the last time I actually went outside and actually, like, did anything, gone for a walk or anything, was literally, like, what, a year and a half, maybe two years ago? Like, the most I go outside for now is to, like, take trash out and to check the mail, and that's really it. And I was like, like I was telling her, when you look back at my original Facebook, which she does have the link to, um, if you look back at my original Facebook that I first had before the trolls got a hold of it and broke into it and did all this and that and the other, like when you look back at like all the photos and all the videos, you can kind of see like, I was doing good back then. I had a life. I was doing good. And then, like, you can kind of see the progression of, like, from those Facebook videos. I'd say, like, towards the very end, like, the last, I'd say, four or five, maybe six videos, you can kind of see where I started to, you know, kind of, you know, started going down that path. And then just from there... It just over time got worse. So then I got, you know, I got to a point last year to where I was so depressed because of everything that I didn't 
like I barely ate anything. I barely drank anything. All I could do was lay in my bed and sleep and not even do anything. Like I barely was doing anything at all. And it got so bad to the point because I was so immobile that because I had not been mobile and moving around, my legs actually started to get an infection in them because I was not being mobile and I was not moving around. And I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know that that could happen. Mm -hmm. But my doctor, my doctor, while I looked at me and said, like, look, like, you need to start getting well. Like, and you can literally see that I was physically sick because I was so sick from everything that went, that happened from the depression, not knowing what to do. Like, I was physically sick. I was so, which thankfully I'm at the the perfect weight and I'll thank God but I was so underweight back then and just so just skin and bones that it was actually scary and my doctor actually told me like straight up like look if you do not start moving around and start eating one that eating is gonna can cause a lot of bad stuff like for mm-hmm. starters like you're not eating right could cause issues but on top of that if you're not moving around and you're not being mobile and this infection continues to spread and you do not do what you need to do you could end up in a wheelchair for the rest of your life and i don't think you want that because right now that infection you're lucky that it's in its early stages because if it builds any further you would probably end up losing your legs and like when he told me that that's kind of when i really realized like Dude, like, I need to get myself mm-hmm. back into shape am now, which thank God I actually am back in shape. I'm actually, let's put it this way, I'm literally five foot three. I'm short as hell. And matter of fact, just the other day, I actually end up weighing myself in it. Right now, I'm sitting at a solid 115. So, like, I'm doing way better than I was. Thank God, like, on the health side of things, as far as, like, my body doing better. I am back to good health. Um, the, um, what you call it, the, um, the eczematic stuff, mm-hmm. like, getting as well, thank God. Like, it's, it's been a hell of a fight over the last year, but it's slowly starting to get better. And, like, now what that I'm getting better, we're gonna, we're gonna get better. This is gonna, this is gonna get oh, better. Oh, I understand. Oh, I understand. Dave, you, you, you finished work 20 minutes ago. I'm yeah. so sorry. That's all right. That's all right. Oh, sure. Okay. I, um, well, is there anything you want uh, else you want to ask? Or do you think you have enough? Because Dave's going to um, Dave's gonna email his old work colleague and mm-hmm. state, see what we can get it's, mm-hmm. um, and see what he can get. Because supposedly he's working in Ohio now. So there should be something. Oh, okay. And and I, um, did, I just want you to think about what I asked you to think about, Chance. Um, your motivation, yeah, why, sure. why these, these incidents always seem to center around the same same idea. So, yeah. Right, definitely. And I can honestly say, like, I definitely do. Like, given how bad these people are, like, I do appreciate, you know, you guys stepping in and saying, like, hey, something mm-hmm. needs to happen before this gets any worse. Mm-hmm. Like, well, that's, yeah, I mean, we're, we're going about Sally, Sally is, is mom, but, like, people will say, oh, well, poor, poor Sally, she has to live with it. But, like I said before, like, Mm-hmm. I, I have no sympathy for her because she's basically left ch- like if it if chance was my mm-hmm. child I would have like stepped in way before this and unfortunately she's just let chance flounder like I, I think that's absolutely disgraceful mm-hmm. but that's my personal but that's my personal stance I am a mother and I and I should not be ex- expressing my personal opinion but anyway I will say good night to you guys because mm-hmm. it's 20 past 10 yeah. here. I love you. I will love you and leave you. Chance, it was wonderful to talk to you again. I'm sorry we had to go over things again, but that's what happens, unfortunately. It's a hard lesson I've had to learn over the years, too. Sometimes, in order to heal, like, old wounds, sometimes you gotta, you know, bust them open and 
do mm-hmm. what you need to do yes. for money. Like, that's, that, exactly, that's life. Chad. Like, sometimes you got like, sometimes you gotta bust open those wounds and get down to the root of it so you can do what you need to do. Mm-hmm. Or in this case, literally, like, in this case, we're literally getting to the root of a massive, you know, virus that's taking over my life that, mm-hmm. and we're finally getting to the root of the whole thing and saying, hey, like, this is the root of what happened. Let's get rid of this shit and move forward and say, screw these people. Like, let's do better, you know? Yep. All right, guys. Well, you have a wonderful night, and I will talk to you again later, I guess. I will talk to you again later. Lots of love. Good night. Bye. Oh, my God. Fuck me.